What are you fighting for? Millions of rounds get played on this map every single day, but what's even going on here? Who are these guys? Who are these guys? And what are these meant to be? Well, on one level it's pretty simple. These are good guys. These are bad guys. This is aid for refugees. In the old version of the map, it was clearly humanitarian aid. And the current versions of the sites contain food and fuel. So it's easy to imagine the bad guys wanting to target this stuff for the generic bad guy reasons. The story, for most people, is really about them and their friends fighting an intense battle against the other team as they try to win the match, and about the pros who play at the highest level in an epic clash for fame and glory. For most people, the story isn't about Bombsite being on Dust 2, it's a story of Simple and Zaiwu, and the great times they have with their mates playing matchmaking on the weekend. But what if there was more going on here? CSGO is not what it seems to be. The rounds you play on these maps are only the first piece of a far larger puzzle, and the picture that forms at the end of it is not a pretty one. And in this video, we're going to be putting that image together bit by bit to uncover the monster that hides beneath the surface. This is the twisted lore of Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Every story needs a bad guy, and despite all the stereotypical bad guy factions in CSGO, the main villains here are really the Phoenix. Now, their origins are a little bit murky. Apparently, they were founded after the fall of the Soviet Union and have been active since at least 1985, which is a bit weird given the Soviet Union fell in 1991, but none of this is too important to the modern version of the Phoenix. Instead, they are all about Valeria Jenner, a mysterious woman who took over the organization in 1999. Now, Valeria's origins might not be known, but her motives definitely are. Valeria is not a psychopath. She's an idealist, a revolutionary. One important thing to understand about CSGO's law is that both sides of the conflict are being supplied weapons by a neutral arms dealer called Booth. And as a result, skins will often have law blurbs on them, almost a bit like Dark Souls. And as Valeria says on the Scorch finishes, the Phoenix is not a symbol of destruction. It's a symbol of rebirth. What that rebirth looks like exactly is up for debate. The finish on the Asterion implies she's something of an anarchist, but it's clear either way that her final goal is some kind of true freedom for mankind. And she almost views herself with a kind of pity, driven not by ambition or joy, but more by a sense of duty. She's fighting for the people, even if they don't understand it yet. But what is it about the world that she thinks is so rotten? What is happening that could truly justify something like this? Well, this is where we need to talk about Operation Wildfire. Operation Wildfire is CSGO's seventh operation, and its story is heavily centered around a man called Franz Kriegold, owner of Kriegold Industries, who joins forces with the Phoenix to assist in their operations. Now, Kriegold is an unlikely ally for Valeria. Where she wants to change the world, he simply wants to change its management. Many in the Phoenix are deeply untrusting as a result. Valeria's personal bodyguard, Naomi, even outright threatens him at one point. But Valeria clearly sees value in France. While it's inevitable their interests will diverge at some point, for the time being, she wants him on their side. But this in turn brings him into conflict with CSGO's protagonist, the Coalition Task Force, the organization that represents the CT faction during Operation Missions. The Coalition Task Force is led by a man called Felix Riley, aka the guy on the radio during Operation Missions. My name is Major Felix Riley, and together we're going to stop Valeria. Now, Operation Wildfire featured three campaign missions where the Coalition targeted a cement factory owned by Kriegold. First, to rescue a journalist held hostage by the Phoenix, secondly, to steal data off Kriegold's PC, and finally, to rescue Booth's daughter, Imogen, who'd been leaking information to the Coalition Task Force, ending in the destruction of the facility itself, although Valeria, Naomi, and Franz all managed to escape. It's a pretty simple plot on the surface, but when you look a bit closer, it starts getting a bit weird. Firstly, there's this area that you stumble upon in the cement factory with accompanying commentary by Felix. These are blueprints for one of Kriegel's rail yards. Why would he target one of his own trains? What's he moving? Now, I realize I've accidentally painted this whole area with a heap of brains from one of the bots, but if you scrape that away, what you get is a map of train. 
that's what it's meant to be, which according to Felix is owned by Kriegord. But why would Kriegord attack his own rail yard? Felix is right. That's really weird. And we're never given an explicit explanation for it either as well. But there are some clues in the game about what's actually happening. Firstly, if you go to train, aside from the fact it's obviously being used to store nuclear materials and also for weapons development, it is also covered in these symbols. Now, this symbol is also found on Nuke where it's identified as a logo to a company called V Shipping Corporation. And this is not the only place where we find the V Shipping Corporation. It's also on the tactical grenades used by the Coalition Task Force in Operation Phoenix. And most importantly, it's also on an M4A4 skin called the Coalition. So why would Kriegel be connected to an organization that's apparently intertwined with the Coalition Task Force? Well, the answer appears to be that he's a defector of sorts from the Shipping Corporation, either a former member or a close associate. Shortly after he joins the Phoenix, Valeria is spotted with plans of Nuke, another V Shipping Corporation location, and those same plans are literally found on Kriegel's computer, so it appears he's been able to bring inside information with him, something that shouldn't be possible unless he was an insider at V Shipping Corp. And this also lines up with what we know about the Coalition Task Force. They're not a normal military organization. They know members come from across the world and their funding is at least in part from private individuals. Individuals, the Phoenix, quickly started to target. Lord William was one of the major backers of the Coalition Task Force, but his money was as dirty as it came. Abducting William was easy. Being for back, that was the hard part. Now, Chase Turner, may be wrong about this money being dirty, but it's clear that the Coalition is, at least to some extent, a private army funded by private money. Big private money. And it's little wonder they're in direct conflict with Valeria. She literally will not shut up in some of the missions about just how much she thinks society is being run for rich and powerful corporations. An organization like the Coalition is her natural enemy. And while Franz Kriegel's motives may be quite different, if his enemy is the V Shipping Corp, for the time being, his interests align with the Phoenix. But what happens when those interests no longer align? Well, this brings us to Operation Shattered Web. Operation Shattered Web is a story of the Coalition's brutal showdown with Kriegeld. Agents infiltrate his island facility of Sirocco only for Kriegeld to saturate the place in chemical weapons. After narrowly escaping the virus bombs, agents break back into the facility, blow it up with explosives before chasing Kriegeld down to his escape boat and taking it out, leaving him presumed dead. Now, during the mission, Kriegeld wears his contempt for the Phoenix on his sleeve dismissing them as revolutionaries and threatening their agents with death if they don't neutralize the intruders. But more importantly, he makes it extremely clear he's running Danger Zone on the island. Join my experiments, and if you emerge victorious, I will show you how the world truly works. And if there was any ambiguity left, we also see drones, sentry turrets, and Danger Zone participants in the facility. But this Danger Zone rabbit hole is where things become increasingly sinister. You see, Kriegeld is extremely quick to play the typical bad guy card where he claims your boss is keeping a bunch of secrets from you and is actually the real bad guy here. And so you found what you were looking for. But consider this. Why do you think Felix knows so much about this place? Perhaps you don't have the whole story. Perhaps I am not the demon he is making me out to be. Now, villains are generally not the most reliable sources, particularly ones that like to run the Hunger Games in their spare time. But there's reasons to think that Felix is hiding stuff from us. I mean, why does Felix know so much? Well, consider this. Danger Zone drones are literally run on V Shipping Corp technology. Their logo plays when you upgrade your tablet. That's the same V Shipping Corporation that also appears to be funding the Coalition. Also, as you probably know, Danger Zone uses missiles and sentry guns, both of which V Shipping Corp appears to be designing at their facility on train. V Shipping Corp's technology is literally all over Danger Zone, something that Felix surely knows. And while Kriegold probably stole this technology, 
it's a rather interesting omission from Felix, but it gets even worse. If you played the Shadow Web missions at the time, you may have noticed Felix's complete disinterest in the fact that Kriegord is running the Hunger Games in his spare time. All that matters to him is sending in a private military force, stealing a sample of the virus bombs, blowing the joint up, and conducting a summary execution. And Kriegord is a terrible guy, but there may also be a reason why Felix is not entirely shocked about what he's up to. You see, Danger Zone is not only run on Sirocco, it is run from a bunch of locations, the most famous one being Blacksite. And fun fact about Blacksite, there were a heap of unused decals of the Shipping Corp included in the game files when the map first released. Not to mention this really suspicious sounding line from the announcer. As always, the board thanks you for your contribution to the experiment. The board approved of it, did they? Well, I'll tell you what. One shifty bad guy does not a board make, and France doesn't appear to have any commercial associates on the island, so where's this board coming from? Is it like a different corporation? A certain shipping corporation? Maybe? It's not conclusive, but even if the shipping corporation isn't running its own danger zone, it's still a very shady company producing some very dodgy things, and its technology is being used in all kinds of messed up ways. And the coalition, arguably, is not that much more than a mercenary outfit protecting its corporate interests. And even if the people they're battling are seriously bad in their own right, it still comes back to the question, what are you fighting for? Following the apparent death of Kriegold, Valeria continues her operations in Broken Fang and her conflict with the Coalition Task Force. Her revolution continues, and while she is extremely brutal and also a complete and utter hypocrite for working with Kriegold even though she hates big business, at least we know what she's fighting for. The ends probably don't justify the means, but at least we know what the ends are. But what of the special forces that die every day protecting the shipping corporation assets on Nuke and Train? What are they fighting for? These men and women are laying down their lives in service to their country, but who are they ultimately serving when they fight here? Are they defending something that should even exist in the first place? There's no definitive answer to that question, and this is what's so messed up about CSGO's law. We know what the Phoenix are fighting for, but at best, the CTs are fighting for a murky status quo which can't even explain, or much less justify itself. Until we know the truth about the Shipping Corp, the question of who the bad guys really are is left open to interpretation. And while I don't actually want Val to fully answer these questions, I do hope they keep building on the mystery, because there is some interesting lore here, and I love the idea that CSGO isn't what it appears to be.